in breaking news, the Baltimore Ravens are signing yet another wide receiver. This is the second one they signed in the past couple of days. What's going on, Baltimore? You got something you want to tell us? Well, we are going to talk about all the possible reasons the Baltimore Ravens are bringing in another wide receiver. What could it mean for the team? What could it mean for this wide receiver? What could his role possibly be? We're going to talk about all that and more shortly before we do. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn the notifications on so you don't miss a single video or a single update when it comes to our Baltimore Ravens. Also, leave a like on the video, baby. Click that thumbs up button. Go ahead and press it right now before we get into things so you don't forget later on. So, the report came from Jordan Schultz. It says, sources, the Baltimore Ravens are expected to sign veteran wide receiver Anthony Miller. The 29-year-old spent last season with the Chiefs and has 12 career Touchdown. So Baltimore bringing in another wide receiver. This time it's Anthony Miller. A couple of days ago it was Russell Gage. In a couple of more days, who knows? Are they going to bring in another one? Go three for three? We'll see. But with Anthony Miller, where did he come from? What is his story? Well, he was a 2018 second round pick for the Chicago Bears. He played for the University of Memphis. And on his way out, he was like, you know what? I'm going out with a bang. So not only in his last, but in his last two seasons with the University of Memphis, he put up back to back. 1400 yard seasons that's a lot that's a whole lot of yards that's a whole lot of catches that's a whole lot of production so shout out to him but how did he do once he got to the pros well looking at his numbers from the chicago bears his rookie year uh he put up 33 catches 423 yards and seven touchdowns that's very big efficiency when it comes to scoring especially on only 33 catches that's pretty good especially for a role player so then uh the following year he put up 52 catches for 656 yards so he upped his catches up the yards the touchdowns did drop significantly though because he only had two touchdowns that year then the following season uh he put up 49 catches for 485 yards and two touchdowns and that was his final season with the chicago bears they end up shipping him off to uh the houston texans and then he ended up on the pittsburgh steelers practice squad that year he did play in one game that season for the steelers practice squad and he got one reception but then uh they signed him to a future deal so then uh in 2022 he was looking good at training camp he was doing his thing but then he ended up getting a shoulder injury that completely ended his entire season um but then uh he did sign another contract with the pittsburgh steelers but was released right before the 2023 season started uh, he was on the, the Kansas City Chiefs for a short stint, um, but then this offseason, uh, they ended up releasing him. So now he is with the Baltimore Ravens. He made his way to Baltimore. So welcome aboard, Anthony Miller. Looking forward to having you and everything that you could possibly bring to the team. Now, initially... When I saw the Baltimore Ravens sign another wide receiver, a couple of different things went through my head. Number one was Rashad Bateman. Obviously, first and foremost, that was number one. I'm like, hey, like, what is going on with Rashad Bateman? Like, when they signed Russell Gage a couple of days ago, that's what went through a lot of our heads. Like, is Rashad Bateman's injury, like, a little worse than what they leading us to believe? And then for them to bring on another wide receiver, it's like, whoa, like, hold up, man. Where is this coming from? Just because the, the timing makes it look a little bit funny. Uh, but then something else I thought about. I said, I know we're not in regular season yet, but this could possibly make, and maybe this is a stretch. But at the same time, hey, who knows? The Chiefs game is literally less than a month away. We, we almost there to keep it clean. We're like, right there, so close to regular season. And he spent his most recent time with the Kansas City Chiefs, even this offseason, because he just got released uh, a couple months ago from the Kansas City Chiefs. So could the Baltimore, and again, I know this part is a stretch maybe, but could the Baltimore Ravens be trying to like pry a little bit of information about the Kansas City Chiefs away from Anthony Miller? Maybe, ah, maybe, maybe. But I'm more so along the lines of thinking that this has something to do with Rashad. Bateman. I know Harbaugh did say it's not serious. Harbaugh did say it's not long term, but you got to wonder. Now, uh, what could his role possibly be with the Baltimore Ravens? I remember him in Chicago uh, earlier, his early years in Chicago, him making uh, some plays here and there for the Chicago Bears. Um, it, it will be very similar, in my opinion, to that of a Russell Gage, uh, but sort of, I don't want to say on a lower level, because Russell Gage, in my opinion, he was the ultimate role player, because again, he was surrounded by a lot of elite talent throughout his career at the wide receiver position. With Anthony Miller, um, he would be another role player too, um, because you think about the Baltimore Ravens, the way that they do things. 
especially in a passing game. Like the number one target, uh, we would expect that to be Mark Andrews. Uh, then the number one A, one B target, we would expect that to be, I think we should expect it to be Zay Flowers. And then after that, you could divvy it up how you want to divvy it up. Uh, Isaiah Likely, we think that they're going to get him involved in the passing game. Rashad Bateman, again, hopefully he's healthy. Uh, they get him involved in the passing game as well, and they just they divvy it up after that. Uh, because with the Baltimore Ravens, it's been a lot of that. Like, 1A, 1B, they get the, all the targets, and then everybody else, they, they got to divvy them up from that point on. Um, but just got to be stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Come in when your number's called, and if you get called on, the, the pass comes your way, be ready to make the play. That's it. Be ready to make the play. Now, uh, with the Baltimore Ravens, them signing so many wide receivers, say, for instance, this doesn't have anything to do with Rashad Bateman. If Rashad Bateman is perfectly fine and this ain't got nothing to do with him, maybe the Baltimore Ravens are looking at their wide receivers after Zay Flowers, after Rashad Bateman, maybe even after Tez Walker, after Tylen Wallace, because they've been saying Tylen Wallace has been doing his thing now. But maybe the Baltimore Ravens are looking at their wide receivers and looking around like, huh, hmm, we could use some more. Oh, and Nelson Aguilar, too. I can't forget about Nelson Aguilar. But maybe they're looking around and thinking like, man, we could use some more depth. We could use some more quality depth here. We could use some more veteran presence here in the building. We could use some more guys with some more experience that have been here, done that in this league. And whether this is for the active roster or this is for the practice squad. Because that practice squad got to get filled out too, baby. It ain't all about the active roster. Those are not the only spots on the team. So this move, again, it, it is a bit of a head scratcher to me. I see some different avenues that this, this move could take us down. But at the same time, I'm just wondering. I, I, I cannot wait till we get full clarity on Rashad Bateman, whether it's him returning to practice next week, uh, whether John Harbaugh comes out and gives us a statement that says, all right, Rashad Bateman will be back at this point. Whatever it is, I think once we get clarity on whatever's going on with Rashad Bateman, that will ease a lot of our stress. So team, keep it clean. We are just that, a team, we a family. And a portion of these videos that I love doing is questions from y'all. If you would ever like to send in a question to be featured on the channel, all you gotta do is send an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Or for the people that are Team Keep It Clean patrons, you can just send it directly on Patreon. You ain't gotta worry about sending an email. So this next question came from my guy, Melo. He said, good evening. I pray God continues to bless and protect your family. Congratulations on your daughter. I, I appreciate you, Melo. He said, I have two daughters and one son. I believe God only gives daughters to special fathers. They are such a blessing, my man, and they will test you like you would not believe it, but it's all worth it. Sort of sound like the Baltimore Ravens in their front office over the years. They be testing me. They've been testing me, but it's okay. No, I, he said, you don't have to read that if you're, oh, no, no that's fine, man. That, every, I think everybody should hear that, man. I appreciate you, man, for sure. He said Take a swig of water. This will take a while. Uh-oh. I ain't getting no water yet, but we'll go. He said, I have an, a, a demand for the Ravens of 2024 offense. Be unpredictable. Do things that are unorthodox, but with deliberate intention. Take some risks. Set things up. Leave no stone unturned. I like that, and I, I feel like that was where they were headed last year. They were doing a great job of that as the season went on. They were in a new offense, and they had some, some struggles. They had some issues. They had some guys go down like a Mark Andrews and whatnot, J.K. Dobbins from Jump. But it led to other opportunities for other guys like Isaiah Likely, obviously, like a Keaton Mitchell. So they were able to adjust and still make it work. But anyway, continuing, he said, we have too many players with individual skills that we don't put in positions to maximize that skill. I hate to admit this because even saying their names makes my skin crawl. But the offensive coaching staff for the NFL team in Missouri scouts and drafts players to do a specific job in their offense. They scheme and coach like this. I don't need you to be good at everything, just great at this one thing. If I have six offensive players great at six different things, I can dismantle the defense with a variety of combinations with precision and accuracy. You would think looking at that team last year, week one, and looking at what they accomplished, no way that they win the Super Bowl with those caliber of players, but they put each person in situation to succeed time and time again. Getting back to the Baltimore Ravens, Todd Munkin, you, sir. Uh, every game should have the Ravens running no huddle offense and hard count at random times throughout the game. Okay, I was a little scared where you were going with that at first because I was thinking you about to say like Chip Kelly style, they need to be running no huddle all game. I was going to say, hold up there, buddy. No, that's too much, but you didn't say that. Uh, anyway, he said, um, don't do it when it's fourth quarter and we're playing from behind. <laughs> Scheme up passing plays with both Lamar and Malik on the field at the same time and actually make Malik throw the ball. Mm, so you, you really want to scheme some stuff up, huh? 
you you really wanted to run some trick plays and all that too. Now with the uh, just going back with the hard count and them running no huddle at random times, I love that because it throws teams off. It makes them know they don't know what to expect. Like oh man, when they come back out on offense, they're gonna, they gonna run no huddle again. We got to be extra ready and extra prepared for that. Like Ravens could switch stuff up. I, I love that. Continuing, he said, "Make Derrick Henry throw the ball every game. Every game? You trying to turn that man into a quarterback?" Derrick Henry about to say, not bad for a quarterback. Anyway, uh, try flea flickers. Run a whole offensive series out of five wide receiver sets. Give the six wide receiver on the depth chart four or five plays just for him to see what could happen. Put all three or four tight ends on the field at the same time. Overload the defensive unit so they don't have a clue what to expect at a moment's notice. All right, now, with all this being said, everything depends on... On how the flow of the game is going In my opinion you don't, wanna, you don't wanna just throw stuff out there Just to throw it out there If you got something that's working Obviously again Like you said You wanna be unpredictable You wanna run the show But if you got something that's working You don't want to For the sake Just to be super unpredictable Throw something random out there And it throws off everything that's working You, you, you want to stick with what's working But I, I feel what you're saying a thousand percent Because you, you, you just don't want the Ravens to get stale You don't want their offense to get stale You don't want their offense to get predictable you, And again, like last year They were doing that Ravens last year Obviously minus the Kansas City Chiefs game But besides that Once they got rolling like they got rolling And that offense was doing their thing So I don't think that this should be a problem In my opinion It, it, it wasn't Anyway, he said Go into the vault and drop 70 points on someone's forehead for once I mean, they almost did that with the Miami Dolphins. He said, this offense could be lethal. I don't care about the number one wide receiver you all want. We don't even utilize the people we have. Did you know Daniel Filele has a rugby background and ran the ball in college a few times and scored? I bet you the Ravens. Come on. Now. He said, I bet you the Ravens didn't even know that. How many times have you seen him run the ball in goal line or fourth and in inches? Never. See, I ain't got no problem with that because, again, last year, something that I, I had to continue to commend the Baltimore Ravens on, they were no nonsense on a goal line in the red zone. They just handed it off to Gus Edwards. All them touchdowns that he got, they came from, like, within the 10-yard within line. He got, like, 13 touchdowns last year, all from within, like, the 5-10-yard to line. So they were no nonsense. Now, if they put Daniel Fai, they line up Daniel Fai-Lele back there. Like, if you want to put him on a goal line, all right, cool. Do it every once in a while. Maybe in a game where, like, the, the, the score is out of reach or something like that. Or maybe on a fourth down and you feel like you got to have. All right, cool. But just for fun, ah, uh, mm, you got Derrick Henry. Like, I feel like you ain't got to play games if you got Derrick Henry back there. But we'll see. He said, we got a kitchen full of utensils and spices, and we keep serving up plain oatmeal. My patience, oh, is wearing thin with the Chiefs in the kitchen, man. Spice that stuff up. Team, keep it clean. Let's go. Respectfully, Melo. All right. <laughs> well, hey, he did warn me. He did say take a squig of water before. But um, no, I the, the part where I disagree, I, I agree with you with switch it up, be unpredictable, all of that. But the, the part where I, I disagree with you, uh, to, more so toward the end, too, uh, where you said that with the Baltimore Ravens, he said we got a kitchen full of utensils and spices, and we keep serving up plain oatmeal. No, I, I disagree with that. Because, again, like I was saying, as the season went, the Baltimore Ravens offense, it got better and better. And they were missing guys here and there. Guys were being out here and there. But they still kept things rolling. Again, minus the Chiefs game, obviously. So, if the I would say if the Baltimore Ravens just pick up where they left off at before the Chiefs game, just pick up where they left off at and just continue to find more ways to incorporate more people, especially Isaiah Likely. Like, again, he proved last year – I can play, I belong here, I can be a big part of this Baltimore Ravens offense and find ways to incorporate him and Mark Andrews. Obviously, Derrick Henry, he's going to get plenty of touch, touches too. Um, but find ways to incorporate, we know Zay's going to get his touches, and they find so many ways to get Zay Flowers the ball. But find how to get Rashad Bateman the ball too. Find out how to get him involved and, and keep him involved. And they were doing this last year too, though. And we said it so many times throughout so many games last year that with the Baltimore Ravens offense, like they got so many different ways and they were showing so many different ways that they got the job done. 
You would think, all right, this person, he got to go off for the Baltimore Ravens to have success. Nope, this person's quiet, but that guy's going off, that guy's going off, and that guy's going off. So they were doing this stuff a lot of times last year. So we just want to see a continuation and variations of what they were doing last season. The Dark Horse again. Next question came from my guy Trey G. He said, what's up, Engraven? In previous years, I've submitted questions regarding the Ravens being a dark horse as landing spots for both Odell Beckham Jr., and Dalvin Cook And look at that We ended up getting both of those guys Now um, A lot of times I, So just randomly This off season I will think back at the Baltimore Ravens And I'll get frustrated I'll get very frustrated Because not only how the Chiefs game went Not only how they ran the show Well really didn't run the show But um, With Dalvin Cook Why would you sign him? Why'd you sign him? I remember when the Baltimore Ravens first signed Dalvin Cook, I was hyped because I'm like, man, we already a strong team, and we just got that much stronger. We got one of the best running backs in the game, and he added to what we already been doing. Oh, my goodness, we about to go crazy. Super Bowl, here we come, baby. Dalvin Cook, you were just on the Jets on that losing team, and now you get to come to the best team. You get to go from the worst to first. Dalvin Cook, oh, you set up nice, man. They ain't even use him. They ain't even use him. They ain't even use them. And, and I think about that a lot of times and just it's very, very frustrating to think about. But anyway, continuing. He says, let's speak it into existence one more time. Uh oh, who we about to talk about? He said, <laughs> this, oh, let's just get into it. He said, do you feel the Ravens have a legitimate shot at acquiring Brandon Ayuk? I feel like Ayuk is the elite receiver we need to guarantee our ticket into Super Bowl 59. Can you imagine how defense can possibly plan to stop Lamar Jackson with weapons like Ayuk, Flowers, Andrews, Likely, and can't forget about Derrick Henry and Keith Mitchell coming out of the backfield? That lineup is absolutely unstoppable. It would be nice, wouldn't it? Like, and I know um, Baltimore Ravens they ain't trying to pay no receiving no 30 something million a year. They ain't trying to pay no receiving no 27 million a year. It'd be nice. It'd be great to have him. It'd be nice, especially because, you know, like, you, you feel like his numbers would not be the same as they were with San Francisco. But to have a receiver that you can rely on, that you can count on, that you can throw it up to, that you know can make plays for you, especially when you need him down the stretch in the clutch, that's a beautiful thing to have. And to have multiple guys who you can do that with, that's a beautiful thing to have, especially for Lamar Jackson. Because we know with Lamar Jackson, when it's come to the wide receiver department, the Baltimore Ravens, they have not done the best by Lamar Jackson. They've tried with some first-round picks now. Hollywood, it was working out fine, in my opinion. Zay Flowers has been great. Rashad Bateman, still question mark, but the potential's there. But besides that, it's been really rough at wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens and for Lamar Jackson. A lot of us have felt like they could have done and should have done a lot more for Lamar Jackson. But... Another conversation for another time. Um, but, yeah, that lineup would be amazing if they could get a Brandon Ayuk. And, and add, to add Brandon Ayuk to everything they got now. Like, they got a lot now, but to add Brandon Ayuk, ooh, that would be lovely. He said, let's push all our chips in this year. What do you think the Ravens would need to give up to get this trade done? I think a first-round pick. Because apparently the rumor is right now that teams are willing to give up a second-round pick and some change. So I think a first-round pick would get it done. Because a first-round pick would, would trump all of that. It would, it would trump all of that. And he says, uh, and how could we free up enough cap space to make it worthwhile for Brandon Ayuk? What I would do, and I've said this before, Brandon Ayuk, I feel like it would be worth it, in my opinion, if they acquired him just for this year alone. Even if they didn't want to pay him next year, they let, wanted, he wanted to be a free agent. Okay, cool. One-year rental. I would, I would be more than willing to do it. More than willing to do it. More than willing. So that's just me, though. What they could do, and now this would be risky business, they could uh, send over, whether it's a first-round pick or send over a second and change or whatnot, if they acquire Brandon Ayuk and got him for this year, one-year rental, franchise tag him next year and trade him. Tag and trade. Tag and trade. Whether you do transition tag, whether you do the, um, what's that? The, the, oh, I, forgot what the, I forgot what the different tags are called. Oh, my, my, my brain. Ever, ever since the whole Lamar thing happened, well, I'm tired of talking about franchise tags because that, oh. Boy, that thing got so ugly. But anyway, um, I, if they tagged and traded him, and then they, they got back something, and then I would free up that cap, boom, that's it. So I wouldn't mind if they did that. I don't think they would, but I wouldn't mind if they did that. He said, as always, uh, thank you for all that you do. Wishing the best to you and your family. Hey, appreciate that, Trey. Thank you, man. Um, but, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's how I would operate. I would be more than willing to do a one-year rental with a Brandon Ayuk. Um, I I would love it. 
Especially again, Brandon Ayuk, Zay Flowers, Rashad Bateman. Those being your top three receivers, not bad at all, my friend. Not bad. Uh, then you still got Nelson Aguilar too. You still got uh, Tez Walker as a rookie. That put that will put even less pressure on him. Not to say he can't stand up to the pressure, but that will put even less pressure on him. Mark Andrews again. You named it. You talked about it. You talked about it in your question. We talked about all the weapons in the previous questions too. So. Ravens got a lot of options. They will have even more options. That would make them that much stronger. Again, I will be all for it. The likelihood of it happening is probably a negative three, especially at this point. Especially if, if Brandon Ayuk is so close to getting that big contract extension from whoever it's going to be. It's seeming like it's going to be the Pittsburgh Steelers. But it will be, it's real nice and fun to think about. But for Baltimore Ravens, it probably ain't going to happen.